one of the most frustrating things as a service provider is when you work with a client who just doesn't take the action um, and so doesn't get results. This is especially frustrating if you're someone who really you know, cares about the impact that you're having and has spent a long time developing a service that you know can get results. So in this video, I wanted to chat to you a little bit about some of the things that you can do to, um, first of all, deal with um, a client who isn't taking the action and the kind of things that you can do to kind of um, improve that situation and help them get the results, um, but also how you can prevent that happening in the first place. So before I dive in, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Colette Broomhead. I'm a business coach and I work with introvert service providers who are selling a high ticket service. And yes, let's talk about results. So most of the people that I work with, no, not most, all of the people I work with um, really care about the impact um, as well as the income that they are um, having with their business. And so I spend a lot of time working with people on developing a kind of results driven service. Um, so often we spend so much time worrying about selling, worrying about getting clients, that we build a service based around um, decisions on what's gonna sell better, um, what's gonna be easier um, to sell, rather than what is going to serve my clients best and what is going to deliver the most impactful results. And actually I'm a huge believer that when you, when you do that, um, the sales come anyway um, much more easily. So how do you deal with this problem? Because let's face it, there's only so much you can do, right? You can, you can really obsess over creating an amazing service that delivers amazing results. But ultimately, if you have a client who isn't taking action, who isn't doing the things that they need to do to get those results, um, then it doesn't matter how great your service is they're not going to get results. So I wanted to chat today about just some ideas for you as to what you can do if you if you are currently experiencing this very frustrating situation. Um, and it's a situation that is very frustrating, but it's also a situation that often as business owners, as service providers, we can take on ourselves and we can end up having feelings of guilt, um, having feelings of kind of resentment towards our clients and, and even sort of self-doubt and doubt around the value of our service. So it can be a really um, important problem to solve if this is something that's happening. So as I often do, I'm going to start with some of the common mistakes that I see people making um, and then we'll move into, you know, some of the things that you can actually do to address this problem. So something I see happening all the time is this assumption that our clients will come to us if they're stuck with something. Um, and it's a fairly natural assumption. Um, However, this is not always going to be the case. And I've worked with lots and lots of different clients over the years and, you know, different personalities, different people react in different ways. So I'll have some clients who are in, you know, constant communication with me and we're sort of, you know, having a lot of communication between sessions um, and they're, you know, very open to kind of bouncing ideas around, to chatting about any, you know, problems that they have, any questions that they have. And then I have other clients who, won't contact me at all between sessions um, and um, sometimes it's those clients that might need a little bit more probing a little bit more um, care and attention just to make sure that they are okay not everyone will automatically come to you if they're not okay if they're stuck um, some people will continue to struggle alone um, unless you actually give them an opportunity to get support the other thing I just wanted to touch on here is, is this taking on responsibility. So yes, um, of course, as a service provider, you have a responsibility to deliver the best results you can to your clients. Um, often though, we end up having this kind of almost like God complex where we take 100% of the responsibility. And so if a client isn't getting results, even if it's because they're not taking action, we end up um, having these sort of feelings of guilt um, that we take on ourselves. And, you know, I just want you to catch yourself with that. Um, and yes, make sure that you're doing the best you can. Yes, listen to these tips and, you know, and act on them so that you can do as much as you can to support clients who aren't taking the action. Um, but ulti ultimately, remember that this is a two way thing. Um, in order for your clients to get results, you need to do you, your part, but they also do need to do their part. And, um, you know, if you've done everything that you can and they're still not doing their part, that's not your responsibility. OK, with that, let's talk solutions then and the kind of things that you can start to do to help your clients 
start take action um, and get the results that you both want them to get. So the first thing um, is to make sure that you have provided plenty of opportunities for your clients to get support, um, however that looks. So um, giving the example of my own coaching program, um, obviously we have the coaching calls themselves where clients can get support. Um, I also offer support between sessions, um, either via um, email or through a an app called Voxer, which I use where we can voice message each other. Um, so depending on what your service is and how it works, that's going to look different um, but just sort of check in and make sure that you have got um, channels open so that clients can communicate with you if they're having a problem if they're feeling stuck um, and you know and that you have communicated that those channels exist um, you know effectively enough something else that I have started doing with my own clients that works really well is, is just having regular check-ins so actually you know having regular conversations whether that's you know um, in person whether that's by message or again however that works for your service as to you know how are things um, is everything going the way it should now that can be a, a formal process you know perhaps where they're actually filling in a monthly review for example you know um, I've seen a kind of traffic light system working really well so getting clients to um, basically just kind of rate um, how they see things going as, as sort of red amber green um, and obviously giving them sort of some definition to go with it, those colors um, uh, or, or you can just have a more informal chat just to sort of check in how are things going you know is there anything you're struggling with? Um, you know, is there anything that's causing you difficulties right now? And just sort of, um, again, opening the channels of communication so that if a client is struggling, um, you know, you're making it as easy as possible for them to have a conversation with you about it and get some help. And that leads me nicely into having honest conversations. So I think this is really important, you know, um, at the first signs of, you know, a client not taking action, I think those first two suggestions can work really well. Just making sure that the, you know, the lines of communication are open and that they can come to you if they need to. If that persists, though, if the client persists in not taking action, then you're kind of getting further and further into working with them and they're still not doing the thing. Um, then I do see it as, a, you know, as a service provider, as your responsibility to have that conversation um, because you are there to support your client in getting results. And if they're not doing the thing that they need in order to get those results, um, then, you know, a conversation is needed. Um, and again, you know, that can be that can be done in some kind of formal way or it could just be a casual. Hey, look, you know, I've noticed that it's been, you know, a month now or however long. Um, and, you know, we've talked about you doing X, Y, Z and that, you know, you still haven't done that. Let's have a conversation um, and see, you know, if we can get this resolved, because there's obviously something um, causing a problem, in, you know, in, in you taking this action. So having that open conversation um, can be, you know, really Really, really helpful in, in getting the client to start moving forward again. Okay, so those are some suggestions as to how you can deal with the client where this is happening. I also wanted to give a couple of suggestions as to how you can prevent this happening in the first place. So this comes down to actually qualifying your clients um, before you even work with them. Um, and this can part of this can come with, with experience and you start to get a sense of the types of people, the types of clients who are probably going to take action and the types of clients who perhaps aren't. Um, and so kind of getting better at identifying those red flags and identifying where you've got someone who you know is potentially um, not going to be um, taking action where they should be um, and you can just sort of prevent that happening by not working with those people in the first place so that's something to kind of think about for your own business is you know have you already seen sort of signs? Do you already know, get a gut feeling, you know, when you're perhaps having a discovery call with someone as to who those sort of great clients, those great kind of action taking clients are going to be and who and who aren't? Because if so, you know, it's really important to listen to that and to um, you know put boundaries in place so that you are working with clients who are going to take action um, because it's not helping you or, or your client if you work with them and, and you know, they're not going to take action. And then the second suggestion for this is to prevent this happening in the in the first place. Um, and this um, can feel a bit tricky um, is to actually raise your prices. So I'm a huge believer 
um, in selling a, a higher ticket service for many, many reasons. Um, but one of those reasons is that you attract people who are more committed to getting the result that you help with, right? When we make a high ticket investment in something, it's because we really, really want that thing. Um, when we make a low ticket investment something in something, um, it's generally because it's a nice to have. It's like, oh yeah, that sounds like it might be, you know, quite good or or quite fun or whatever. Um, but um, where you're charging lower ticket prices, you're more likely to attract the people for whom this is a nice to have rather than a must have. Um, where someone has invested, you know, a lot of money in something, um, they are much, much more likely to show up and take action because they want to make good on their investment. Um, so that's another really good way to ensure that the people you're attracting in the first place are going to be the people who are going to take action. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree with what I say? Do you disagree? I'd love to know. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. I go live Monday to Friday um, with tons of tips and help in helping you to sell your high ticket service uh, and develop a service that is going to get results as well. And I shall see you again tomorrow.